Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about rational exponents. So leading up to this lesson so far, you should have learned multiplication properties of exponents, division properties of exponents, and now we're gonna be dealing with exponents that are actually in fraction form, which is why it's called rational exponents, because rational means ratio and ratio means a fraction, comparing two numbers. And you're gonna see we go back and forth between writing expressions using a fractional exponent and also using a radical. Now, something we need to make sure we know is that anytime we see an expression that looks like this here, this means the nth root of b. Very often, we're so used to not even seeing any number there. That usually means it's the square root. So if I said the square root of 25, you would know the answer is 5. But if I said to you, what's the cube root? We would put a 3 where n is. And you definitely should have learned about cube roots up until this point. Well, what we're going to learn is whatever root of a number we are trying to calculate, we can rewrite it as an expression as a rational exponent. So it would be the same base of b, but to the 1 over that root power. So if I wanted to find the cube root, we're going to see exactly that that 3 is what gets put into the denominator of my fraction of my exponent. Okay, so let me take, let's take a look. So the square root of b actually means b to the one half power. That does not say b times one half, it is b to the one half power. So if I said to you the square root of 49 and I wanted you to write it as a with a rational exponent, it would become 49 to the one half power. And 49 to the one half power means the same thing as the square root of 49. These mean the exact same thing, they're just in different forms. And we know the square root of 49, it's seven. So whether I ask you the square root of 49 or I ask you what 49 to the 1 half power is, both results are going to be 7. So now cube root would be a base to the 1 third exponent. So if I said to you what's the cube root of 64, it's the same thing as saying 64 to the 1 third power and the cube root of 64 is 4 because 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64. The fourth power, I'm sorry, the fourth root of 81. So you can see the if I wanted to find the fourth root of 81, it is 81 to the one fourth power. And the fourth root of 81 is three, because remember three times three is nine, another three times three is nine, and nine times nine is 81. The fifth root, so if I asked you what's the fifth root of 32, it's the same as 32 to the one fifth power which is two, because if I take two and I multiply it five times, two times two times two times two times two, you will get 32, and then sixth root. And I think you get the point of this at this point about how we are rewriting it. So it's one in the numerator and then the root in the denominator. And then we would of course have to go ahead and figure that out. So we're gonna take a, a look first at just rewriting some of these expressions. And you're gonna see some of them are just numbers and some of them have variables and some of them have a little bit of a tricky situation we have to make sure we understand. So 14 to the 1 half power would mean the square root of 14. And these answers, guys, we're not going to be able to simplify their irrational numbers. But now this next one, what I need to show you is this says 5 times x to the 1 half. So the 1 half exponent only deals with the x. It has nothing to do with the 5. So that would mean that this is 5 and then x to the 1 half means the square root of x. And the same thing's gonna mean, the next one's gonna mean the exact same thing. So I have 17, and then I have y to the 1 third power. So that means I'm doing 17, and y to the 1 third means I'm finding the cube root of y. And I need to go and sneak in my little three there. Okay, so 17 cube root y. x to the 1 third, well, we know what that means, that's the cube root of three. Same thing here, 19 a b to the 1 half. b is the only variable that the 1 half goes to. So it's 19 a and then square root b. The fourth root of y, if I now wanna use a rational exponent, would be y to the 1 fourth. Now 12 n, the entire expression here has the square root. So the entire expression here under the square root or my radical symbol here is going to get sent to the one half power. And now parentheses are incredibly important in this expression because if I don't have the parentheses, it's going to mean that the one half would just go to the n, like these problems were up here. But because the entire value of 12 n and is 
under the radical, then I have to make sure that the entire expression gets that one half. The cube root of b would be b to the one third, and the square root of 37 would be 37 to the one half. So now we're gonna actually take a look at numbers that we can actually simplify. So 49 to the one half, remember that means the square root of 49, so it's seven. 25 to the one half means the square root of 25, which is five. 27 to the one third. So remember that's asking you what's the cube root of 27? What multiplied by itself three times gives you 27? It is definitely three. 64 to the one third, we saw this on the previous screen. So what number multiplied by itself three times is 64? It is four, right? Because four times four is 16 times four is 64. 100 to the one half power. So what's the square root of 100? It's 10. The fourth root of 16 is two, right? Because two times two times two times two would give you 16. The square root of 144 we know is 12. The cube root of 125, what number multiplied by itself three times gives you 125? It's five. And the square root of 64 is of course eight. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at rational exponents where we actually have a number in our numerator. So here's what's going to happen. If I say to you, take the square root of a value and then cube it, what I'm actually doing is I'm rewriting it as a rational exponent of three over two. So there's really a two here, right? Because I'm finding the square root of B and I'm raising it to the third power and look what happens. The power I'm raising it to is the numerator. Okay, in my expression. The denominator is my root. Now, here's what this actually means. It means I'm taking the nth root of b, which I know is b to the one nth power, and if I raise it now to the mth power, remember what happens when we multiply our exponent. It's a power to a power. One over n times n, m, becomes m over n. So when I multiply this power to a power, when I rewrite that radical expression as a rational exponent expression raised to a power, this is what it ends up becoming. So if I said to you, I want you to calculate the square root of nine and cube it, what I'm really asking you to do is find nine to the three over two power. And again, when you don't see a number in your little nook here for the root, it's two. If you do see a number, then you know exactly what it is. So what this is saying is find the square root of nine, find the second root of nine, and then cube it. So the square root of nine is three, and then three to the third power would give me 27. So I use work, always work with the root first. You cannot go to the power first and then the root. So you always take your number, figure out the root of that number, and then raise it to your power. So here, cube root of 64 squared. So that means I'm doing 64 to the 2 thirds power. So I first have to figure out the cube root of 64, which we know is four. And then I take that four, raise it to the second power, four to the second power is 16. Next one, the uh, cube root of eight to the fourth power. All right, I would rewrite that as eight to the 4 thirds power. So I have to first figure out the root. So the cube root of eight is two, and then I take two and raise it to the fourth power. Two to the fourth power is also 16. Fourth root of 16 cubed. So fourth root of 16 we should know is two. We've now seen these not so many of these numbers get just repeated. And two to the third power is eight. Okay, so you can see how I'm rewriting it. And the last one, the fifth root of 32 squared would mean that I'm doing 32 to the 2 fifths power. So the fifth root of 32 is 2, and then 2 to the second power is 4. So notice the process that always happened. You take your number, you figure out the root, which is the denominator, you keep that root answer in your head, and you raise that, that answer to the exponent power at the top. Okay, so we're gonna just do some rewriting. Again, none of these are gonna get simplified, they're just getting rewritten. So 14 to the three halves power. So that means I'm taking the square root of 14 and then I'm cubing it. I put the two there, we don't need the two there, but I'm just putting it there as a placeholder so you can see what's happening. So now this next one, 
the x to the, uh, the three halves exponent only goes to the x. It has nothing to do with the five. So the five stays on the outside. And now x to the three halves would mean the square root of x cubed. Same like 14 to the three halves power. So now it's switching. 17 is on the outside. Now this means to take the cube root of y and then square it. So cube root of y squared would look like this x to the 3 fourths would mean to take the cube root of x and then raise it to the fourth power. 19ab to the uh, 5 halves power. So again, the 5 halves only goes to b. So it's 19a. That means the square root of b to the fifth. Now this one. This is now me putting it as a rational exponent. So the fourth root of y raised to the third would be y to the three fourths. So notice the exponent you're raising your expression to is your numerator. The root is always your denominator. Here, the root, I should notice if I don't see a number, remember it's two. So it's the entire expression of 12n to the three over two power. b to the two thirds power, and then 37 to the five halves power. And now we're going to actually go ahead and use some numbers that we can simplify and actually get some numbers from. So 49 to the 3 halves. So remember, you start with the denominator. So the square root of 49 is 7. And then we would have to do 7 to the third power. So 7 times 7 times 7. That gives us 343. 25 to the 3 halves. So we find the square root of 25 is 5. And then 5 to the third power, 5 times 5 times 5, is 125. 27 to the third power, uh, 20, I'm sorry, 27 to the two thirds power. So again, look at the root, the denominator, the cube root of 27 is three, and then we raise three to the second. Three to the second power is nine. 64 to the two thirds, the cube root of 64 is four. Four squared is 16. 100 to the three halves, so the square root of 100 is 10. 10 to the third power, so 10 times 10 times 10, that's 1,000. The fourth root of 16 is 2, 2 to the third power, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Now, the square root of 144 is 12, and then 12 squared is 144, and these are always my favorite. And this is something we're going to see later on in algebra, is that the square root and the squared operations, they're opposite. Just like if I added 3 and then subtracted 3, I'm left with just zero, they're opposite operations, it's gone. The same thing with if you square root something and then you square that answer, you're going to get the value that's actually under the radical. Cube root of 125 is five, five squared is 25. And then square root of 64 is eight, eight squared is 64, and that's just like my 144 problem. The square root and the squared symbol actually just Simplify each other out. So now we're going to take a look at what it means to solve a, um, an exponential equation. So here's the deal. When you want to solve 2 to the x power equals 8, the way we solve an exponential equation is we have to make sure the bases are identical. Like if this problem looked like 2 to the x equals 2 to the fifth, you would know, okay, well, x definitely has to be 5. And we would know that because the bases are the same. So once the bases are the same, you're going to just set your exponents equal to each other and you're good. Well, clearly the bases are not the same here, but think about it. We could rewrite 8 as a base of 2. 8 is 2 to what power? It's 2 to the third. So now if my bases are the same, then I can clearly see what my exponent's supposed to be. x is just simply equal to 3. Same thing here, 3 to the x plus 1 power is equal to 27. Well, those are clearly not the same bases, but we can rewrite 27 with a base of 3. 27 is 3 to the third. And now what happens here is same idea. We set x equal to 3, and that was our equation. So now in this one, we set this entire exponent equal to this exponent, and then we just have you know a little mini one-step equation to solve, and we end up getting x equals 2. So once the bases are the same, we're able to then set the exponents equal to each other and solve. 
So then let's take a look at these next two. So four to the X minus three power equals 64 and three to the three X plus one equals 81. So 64, we should remember if I wanna write it as the same base of four is four to the third. I'm then going to be able to set my exponents equal to each other. So X minus three is equal to three. And that means my exponent here is, my X value is six. Next one, the three to the three X plus one power equals 81. So 81, three, right? So three times three is nine, times three is 27, times three is 81. So 81 is three to the fourth. I would then be able to set three X plus one equal to four and then solve. And I know I'm going quickly, but it's because the numbers are very, very friendly to work with. Okay, these two here. Now, 216 may not be in your head, but six times six is 36. 36 times six is 216, so it's six to the third. And then once you have like bases, you set your exponents equal to each other, and we end up getting x equals one third. Four to the five x minus three power equals 16. 16, that's easy, it's just four to the second. Then we can set our exponents equal to each other and solve. Okay, and now these last two. So these are a smidge different. Um, we don't have the same bases. We can't really turn 25 into a five, but we can turn this five, I'm sorry, we're gonna turn this 25 into a five so we have the same base. But 25, if I turn it into a base of five, really means I'm doing five squared times that exponent of x plus two. So look what actually happens here. My exponents actually become two times x plus two equals six. So whenever you have a number and you're trying to set it to a base but you actually have to take your bases down, uh, this is the situation that would end up happening here. So it's actually five to the second power is 25, but now that second power is gonna get multiplied by the power of x plus two that we had originally. And now that's the equation that we would set up to solve. And you can see after, once you get that set up, the um, equation is just fine. The numbers itself are easy to solve with. And now this last one's the same idea. Um, if I wanna rewrite 27 as a base of three, then I would need to make sure that I rewrite 27 as three to the third, and then the third power, I'm gonna highlight it, is gonna get multiplied by the power that's already there of x minus three, and then that becomes my equation that I would set equal to each other, and then be able to solve for x. And what also is something you can of course do, you can always go back, plug in the x value, um, and double check it, you know, plug in a one and do one plus two is three, calculate what 25 to the third power is and see does that equal five to the sixth power and if you get the same result you know you're good same thing over here if i plug in a six for x six minus three is three i can calculate what 27 to the third power is and if it's the same thing as three to the ninth then again i know i'm good thank you so much for watching this video i know it was a lot of information i hope it helps bye